All right, guys, good boy 32 here, check it out. So, man, I am back to doing what I absolutely love doing the most, and that is putting together a, a variety of different type of rifles. And, and currently, right now, I'm kind of in a confused state because I have three different rifle builds going on. One is what I call a AR-15 defensive rifle, not the so-called assault rifle, but a defensive rifle. And another one is a mid-level three-gun rifle, which I'm thinking might be on this platform, I'm not sure. And then I have a new DMR rifle that's in the process. And we're going to take you along for the journey on each one of those. But as part of the journey, I reached out to a few different companies to see if they'd like to take part of this project. And one of them was Trigger Tech. And they said, absolutely, they'd love to. So they sent out this trigger. And one of the reasons I'd actually asked for this thing, uh, one is, I'll tell you, I was out at SHOT Show. And I was talking to a gentleman. I have the uh, MPA, Masterpiece Arms, with the Curtis Custom Axiom, Curtis Axiom Custom Trigger uh, action in it. And they run the Trigger Tech. And I was like, yeah, I've got that. And well, anyway, Curtis was sitting right next to me when I uh, was asking about that. But in any case, they've uh, volunteered to send one of these guys out here to be uh, installed on one of our test platforms. And I'm going to perform an overall review. Now, I typically will do the trigger reviews on a PCC because it's a lot more fun. I'm able to take you out there, but because we are using this on one of the three damn builds that I've got going on, and I think what we're gonna do for right now, I've got a uh, mil spec lower that is set up for the defensive rifle. And then this guy right here is set up for our mid-level mid three-gun rifle. Now, I have stuck this B5, uh, B5 SOP mod stock on here just because I think it will go well with the uh, upper that we're going to be testing along with this guy once we take it all to the range. But in any case, whew, let's get to it. All right. <laughs> AR, this is the Trigger Tech. <laughs> this thing is, is pretty awesome. First of all, it comes in a really cool box like this. Now, Gavin Tube is another YouTube channel, and he actually hooks this thing up to a computer. We're not going to do that. We're doing it old school style. So this thing, it actually is state of the art in so many different ways. Now what I'm going to do, I want to go ahead and bring the camera down so that you can see exactly what we're looking at because, guys, I pulled it out of the box last night, and it is... It is breathtaking how clear it is. And, and one of the things is I don't know that I'll actually be able to tell you about all the new pieces of technology that are involved in this thing, but I'm going to try. So let's bring that camera on in here so you can see what the heck we're talking about. Here we go. All right, so first of all, let's just take a look at the aesthetics of the trigger. One of the first things that I will typically look at when I'm looking at a competition or a custom trigger, guys, this trigger is not cheap. This thing retails for about $300. But when you start talking about adjustable triggers, that is a, a price line that you're going to have to pay. They do have some other triggers that are not adjustable that are uh, a little bit more economical. And I'll put the link down to Trigger Tech down below so you can go ahead and see it. Or you can just go straight on over to KB32Tech.com. It's KB32Tech.com. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Um, They've got a couple different little deals that they've got on this, uh, some patent pendings. Okay, so frictionless release technology. Uh, there's no friction points. And, and I wanted to explain to these, these things to you before we do that. Okay, so this is a traditional two-stage trigger uh, where your contact points are going to be, hold on, basically, I'm holding it backwards, here and here. Okay. So one of the things that has always happened is that no matter what you do, you have to have these surfaces need to be polished or really clean or well lubricated in order to provide you with a, an extreme clean break. Now, one of those clean breaks, one of the best ones out there, is going to be the Geisley. That's one of the ones that I run. They put like a little Geisley grease in there. But the trigger, the, con the polish contact points are extremely smooth and they're mated up there. Also, Airborne Arms is another one that I like a lot as well. Now, in this guy right here, they have the things called frictionless release technology, and it's, there's no friction points. And what they have inside, now I'm going to try to see if that'll focus in, there we go. Inside there, each one of the contact points, including the disconnect as well as the trigger release platform, is a free-floating roller. Now, some people have had some... Uh, some concerns about that is if there's any uh, dirt or anything else gets up in there, but they have done a lot of extended weight, extensive testing. Look at the spring. 
My God, man. So when, yeah, I'll tell you what, when they said they were going to send this thing to me, I was extremely excited. Another one of these things is they have the TKR technology. Ticker enables a quicker reset. And there's a little swing arm in there. I'm not sure what it does, but anyway. And then they have the clicker technology, adjustable trigger. Uh, and it has tactile clicks right here. And there's a fail safe, fail safe with, that helps you withstand over tightening. So you can loosen it down to like, uh, what does this thing say? 1.5 pounds to four pounds. Now, what I suggest rolling around town uh, in your defensive AR with a one and a half pound trigger, uh, hell no. Uh, but what I say, a four pound trigger, absolutely. So let's go ahead. I am going to open up the box here because there's a bunch of stuff rolling in. It says open. I think Gavin Tube said that also. And we're going to take a look at what we got in here. Okay, so first of all, I've got a really cool trigger. Uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, sticker. Then we have a really cool vinyl patch. I'm going to put that on my gun bag. And then we've got a set of instructions. One of the things that we're going to do is we notice that we don't have any, uh, what do you call those things, uh, pins. So we're going to have to go up, come up with a couple pins here. So stand by. All right, so as an avid AR-15 builder, you know I'm going to have a couple of the uh, trigger and hammer pins laying around. Matter of fact, I've got a bunch of these guys laying around. So what are we going to do first? Well, according to the instructions, we need to go ahead and remove that screw right there. But we need to be careful that the hammer does not go forward. In order to remove it, we're going to take a flathead screwdriver. And in accordance with the wonderful rules of YouTube, I am prohibited from showing you how to properly install this guy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place it in the lower and then we will be right back but look at look at that if you can see it all right so one of the things i do want to do is is i want to give you a tour of the interior let's get it up here real close get the thing to focus in and now what i want to do is i want to release the hammer and give you a tour of the interiors now as you can see what we're going to do is we're going to install it by dropping it in. We've got to fit this little booger right here underneath the safe, the safety selector switch. Then we're going to take one of our Allen wrenches. And it's nice because they have the little thing that says snug. And then you can adjust the trigger pull. And if you can hear that, that is really cool. So what that does is it makes sure that once you engage your selected or desired settings, all you got to do is leave it there. It will not move. All right, so let's go ahead, and there's the, uh, the snug up points right there, as you can see. So let's go ahead and put this guy in. And as usual, you want to go ahead and make sure that your hammer is in. But you can see, look at that spring. So the cool part about this wire spring, look at that thing is that no matter what you set the uh, trigger pull at, it will not degrade the spring here so that when you have those tough primers, like those Russian ones, the tulips, or whatever else you got, you don't have to worry about any light primer strikes. Let's go ahead and put this bad boy in, and then we'll put the test to it. And then we're going to take it out to the range and have some fun. Stand by. Okay, so that is the trigger as it is dropped in. Now, this is a brand new lower receiver. So I'm very excited about how clean that looks. Let's go ahead and, and release the trigger so you can see what that looks like. Now, it doesn't have the holding pins in there. But, man, look, at it looks like a race motor. Unreal. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that back, and we'll put the rest of this thing together. Check it out. Nice. So now that we've got the grip installed, the trigger's in place, and the pins basically just fall into place, and there's no friction hold on them at all. Uh, what we'll have to do is go ahead and tighten up these rear screws, the snug buttons, because you can <laughs> snug buttons, that's kind of cool. As you can see, it's moving around quite a bit. So let's go ahead and put that front pin in. But guys, in all honesty, Look at the look at that thing. That's got it. Those springs are ridiculous, ridiculous. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to tighten these up right here. I'm going to rotate just like that. 
with all the arrows snug and we'll do both sides now I tell you what this is reminiscent with the screws tightening up like this with any any of the uh, drop-in units where you got the snug button on the bottom of it so there it is I'm gonna reset That's not two stage. Look at that. Wow. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and I am going to adjust. We're going to go ahead and put it all the way up as much as we can. And we'll get a, uh, as you can hear it, those are tactile. And what it is, it's just basically a cam system. And you go to their website, they do have that uh, little deal on there. So let me get a earplug and put in place right here. We'll get our trigger scale out and we'll go ahead and pull this thing and see what it's hitting at. Okay, so I don't know what it is I just found, but it's absolutely perfect. So it's got a little adhesive, 3M adhesive on that side. And go ahead and put it right in there. And let's test it out just to make sure. One of the things is, this is an error precision lower receiver. And besides that, if you dry fire a, an open receiver, everybody on the internet is just gonna go crazy. So let's go ahead and try it out. Wow, that's nice. Let's see what the reset is on the trigger. Stand by. Good grief. That Okay, that's nice. All right, let's see what the trigger pull is at its highest. I think it's going to be a little bit over four pounds. My finger fits right about there. Yeah, it's pulling right at five pounds. Now, let's do this. Let's bring it all the way out and see where it pulls at. Now, that's not to say that my trigger scales are probably not the greatest in the entire free world. One of these days, I'm going to upgrade to the digital ones. But, uh, you know what? I'm just a normal working guy. So, one of the things is that you shouldn't be able to back this thing all the way out. It should stop. That's scaring me because it's not looking like it's going to stop. <laughs> Hold on. We'll, we'll keep going. Yeah. That... that that screw is going to fall out. All right, so I may make a suggestion. Yeah, it's completely backed out all the way. Will it come out? Yeah, just a little bit. You can see there's a cam section on that screw right there. I'm looking down in that hole. All right, let's go ahead and put it back in there. Just buyer beware, it will come all the way out. All right, it said you don't have to worry about over tightening. It didn't say anything about it not coming out. So let's go ahead and make sure we don't cross thread it. And what I want to do is I want to engage one click. Hold on, we're getting to the clicks. Let's leave it there. Let's see what that does. Ooh. Okay, Let, I don't know if that's even gonna register on it. This thing starts at eight pounds. One and a half pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and take it up to about two. There's one click, two clicks. I know that's not gonna come out. Let's go ahead and pull that trigger back with a hammer. Put it in there. Two pounds. And I'm okay with that. Wow. Let's bring it out one more notch. One, two, three. There's just a little bit of slack. Oh, geez Louise. Okay. Um. I'm going to do something here real quickly. That is probably one of the finest trigger pulls I've ever had the pleasure of pulling. Like I said, I have the curved version on my MPA. They do make it in a curved version. That, ladies and gentlemen, is... That's a double tap heaven right there, buddy.
Jesus, God. All right, guys. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I am seriously impressed. Uh, I don't... I got a lot of different triggers, and uh, one of my favorites is probably going to be replaced with this thing right here. Uh, this wing, <laughs> it's it's absolutely awesome. Um, <sighs> yeah, if you're looking for quick double taps. The, uh, the cool thing about this thing, uh, and let me go get another mag and I want to show you. Stand by. Okay, so the beauty of a trigger is this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead and release that bolt there. Let me see if I can make sure we're coming in. Uh, so here's the take up. That's the first stage. There is no first stage. It's just like a little bit of a take up. It's kind of crazy. When I watch this, Okay, here we go. That was the press, and here's the reset. <laughs> Hold on one second. Here we go. Reset. Reset. All right. So, guys, that, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely incredible. All right. Well, that's it. That is my official review. Would I have any problems recommending the Trigger Tech Diamond AR Trigger? No, I would not. Uh, if you are looking for a very high-end trigger, oh, I just want to open it up and see how dirty it got today. Like I said, a while back, that thing looks like something that comes out of a race car. That is awesome looking. All right, well, guys, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate in leaving them in the comment section down below. Uh, the guys over there at Trigger Tech, thanks so much for sending this out. This will be indeed the uh, trigger that will fuel the new uh, three-gun rifle. And shoot, as far as I'm concerned, you could take this thing off. As it's kind of like a two-stage uh, and use it as a DMR rifle. With that being said, guys, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women, in uniform. 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom comes in a one and a half pound to five pounds or four pounds. Trigger. It's good boy 32. I'm out.